Paddy, the World Cup back again. It's uh, all on ITV, so it's terrestrial television coverage, uh, which is probably b uh, bound to help boost it. But whenever you look to it, do you, as a former top-class player, do you get excited at the thought of a rugby World Cup coming off? I do, yeah. I mean, it's it's nice to be able to watch as a spectator now and a fan. And you know, I'm lucky enough to travel the way to the last three World Cups. Uh, and uh, it'll be nice to be different now, obviously. You Not know, as intense watching it as a supporter as it was being involved in it. And my wife will be happy to see me around uh, now rather than well, you need away for that. six weeks. <laughs> yeah, that's true, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was thinking, you know, Ireland and the build-up. Uh, a few weeks ago, you know, there we were back to back Six Nations, you know, champions, mm. the excitement, the hype. We were second in the world. Now we've slipped down to about six or, or so, <laughs> like that. Two and different the last two matches. If Joe Schmidt was going out of his way to dampen the hype, he certainly succeeded, hasn't he? Uh, he certainly has, yeah. And I wouldn't put that past him either. Uh, you know, Joe's, he's a shrewd operator, he's very pragmatic. He won't have wanted to show any any of his hand at this stage. Mm -hmm. You know, he's we haven't hit the competition yet. He knows he's in a good position where he's playing two of the lesser nations before he gets his uh, gets into the Italy and the French game at the end of the group. That's probably going to decide the group. So from that point of view, he didn't want to give too much away, and he knows he can uh, he can sort of bed in the players gradually in those first two matches and get them hitting the hitting their strides come the Italy game. So uh, pragmatic approach, but I, I don't think the camp will be too worried about their performance in the, in the pre-season. Do you think that's a dangerous approach all the same? You know, like you can't turn form on and off like a top. You've often said that, everybody said that. Is that, is that not I dangerous? There, there is a danger, yeah. Uh, we certainly found that in 07. We were highly touted coming off of Six Nations and had a pretty disastrous uh, warm-up. Uh, run of games and uh, and that led in unfortunately into the tournament where against a lesser side in Namibia and Georgia we, we got some scares in those games and uh, that wasn't ideal and then confidence obviously a bit shaken then going into into, the, into those Argentina and, and French games in, the, in that 07 World Cup so yeah it is it's a delicate balance you don't want to show too much uh, you don't want to get any injuries you want to rest players when you can and uh, but you still want them hitting top form. Uh, I'm sure in the Canada game, I would guess he'll play you know, a f close to full-strength team uh, to create that, that wave of, mo of momentum. Now, you talk about the, our opening games, Canada and Romania. We are expected to mm. uh, beat them and beat them with a bit of style and a wee bit of spur, but it'll all come down, uh, I suppose, any chance of progress and to... to mm avoid the doomed quarter mm -hmm. final against the All Blacks, it'll come down to the match really against France, will it? Well, you'd hope so. I'm mean, sure Italy will have something to say about that as well. I think uh, that you know that word momentum is key. I think it's key also that a lot of the squad get game time in those first two games so they feel part of the whole thing. Uh, so that training, you know, nobody's throwing their head down in training. Everybody's buying into the, the end prize. And that all creates a good atmosphere that obviously then leads to winning matches. And uh, the Italy game won't be won't be a walkover by any stretch. But you'd like to think everything will come down to that last game uh, against the French. And, and unfortunately, the French seem to do very well in World Cups because they're they're together for you know a sustained period of time. I think, and sometimes in Six Nations in November series, you don't see the best of them because they don't really gel as a squad. They tend to do that. A bit better in World Cups because they have more time together. So, uh, although Ireland have had a very good record against France in recent years, uh, they're going to be a very tough ask at the end of that group. We'll go in and talk about that a wee bit more in depth and come back to Ireland against France. But I'll I'll talk about the other, <coughs> the other home nations, so to speak. You mentioned Italy, obviously in the Six <coughs> Nations, they will obviously give it all their best. But when you look at the likes of uh, uh, Scotland, Wales, England, how would you assess their chances? Well, England at home, I think, have, have a great chance. Uh, they've proved in previous World Cups that even when they're not playing their best, they can still make finals. They've won it in 03. They have the pedigree there to uh, and the squad to go all the way, and obviously home field advantage, advantage is going to help. I think Wales at 25-1, to 1, having lost half Penny and Reese uh, uh, Webb, their scrum half, are still a very good bet. Uh, they look very strong in that Irish game. And uh, you know, I wouldn't 
put it past them making a real run at things. Uh, Scotland are ever improving. They've got a, a good coach and uh, a good way of uh, uh, developing a strong culture there, uh, and obviously trying to play play a bit of rugby. Uh, that you know their nucleus of the team is from Glasgow, uh, who have just won the the Pro Twelve. So uh, that will help. You know the chemistry amongst the team. Uh, so all in all, I think you know Ireland have a amongst all the the home nations as good a chance as any but I would probably say England with that home field advantage uh, you know have a, have a chance probably to go all the way Right Ireland France <laughs> we'll go back to that mm -hmm. game which potentially will decide what quarter final line up uh, obviously Ireland will get and of course we know Ireland have never gone beyond despite all the hype yeah. despite all the Six Nations despite all the titles that we would win we've never gone beyond the quarter final stage yeah. but can we beat France? Of course yeah that's History shown in the last few years, we've we've had their number and been able to turn them over even away from home. So, from that point of view, there'll be no question in the guys' minds that uh, France will be very beatable. They are a different animal in the World Cup, as I said. That they, they have a good record. Uh, you know, they got to the final four years ago and uh, were unlucky not to win. So, from that point of view, uh, it'll be a very tough ask. But I th I think as long as Ireland stay relatively injury free and can put out their best team, uh, they will beat France. Now, if we beat France, then the chances are, it could, it's all like a, a crystal ball here. You know, it could be Argentina. And you would have, you would fancy, at, look, at this stage, we could probably cut, through, cut to the chase and say uh -huh. that Ireland, if they beat France, have a massive, massive opportunity to make at least the semi-finals. Yes. And I think anything less will be a disappointment to the, for this squad. Uh, would you say so it would be a disappointment for the squad? Would the squad feel they've achieved by reaching the semi-final or is there more to this squad and more to Joe Smith than that? I think there still is a wee bit more, but certainly historically we haven't got past the quarter-finals. So from that point of view, it still would be an achievement to make a semi. Uh, but, you know, who do, who do you find yourself up against in the semi then? Probably England, isn't Pro it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Twickenham. in Twickenham the old enemy mm -hmm. it sets up nicely doesn't it and uh, and again over the past few years you know Twickenham hasn't been a place that uh, you know has been a fortress to Ireland or for England against Ireland uh, Ireland have always been very competitive so you know they will uh, that, it, it sets up nicely and uh, let's hope we can get that far and it'll make a great great day out would it be conceivable that Joe Smith and the likes of Paul O'Connell going into that last test against England would have had that in the back of their heads that we could be playing these lads in the semi-final here at Twickenham? Let's get a taste of Twickenham again, mm -hmm. but let's not show too much. Probably in the back of their minds, certainly. I mean, I think that's how detailed Joe is. Uh, they won't want to show him much of their hand. Joe's very set-piece orientated. He didn't show very much from a set-piece, from strike moves off that for the backs or from the forwards from line-out time. So... Uh, it was it was fairly smart, but yes, you're right. Uh, it, it gave them a taste all the squad of, of Twickenham. Uh, you know, hopefully, uh, whenever if if it comes to that, and, and Ireland play England at Twickenham, uh, you know, hopefully uh, England will be a bit uh, will have a bit bit too much swagger, and uh, will be a bit overconfident uh, having beaten Ireland in the in the warm up games. I hate talking like that, but it's the way we have to do it, looking at mm -hmm. the conjecture to the World Cup. Whenever you take a look at the rest <coughs> of the betting, but New Zealand, clearly, you know, they're the favourites. They're the team to beat. I think they played, uh, I read somewhere they read, they played 47 tests since they last won the World Cup. Mm -hmm. And they've won 44 of them. They yeah. defeats to South Africa, Australia and England. Yeah. And that's it. It's phenomenal. Uh -huh. It's just a cult. Should have lost Ireland, but that's it. Yeah, it's uh, you know it's this winning culture that they have. Uh, they want to be the best sporting team in the world, uh, regardless of of what shape of ball they play. Uh, that's where they set their standards, and everybody buys into that. They're rightfully the favourites, uh, as that record shows. So it'll it'll take them being on a, on an off day usually to uh, to be knocked out, and their opponent to be playing the game of their lives. So uh, they're they're rightfully so their favourites. Now, let's be forever. The All Blacks are a great team, but boy, can they live in the edge? They certainly can. <laughs> yeah. They? Yeah. yeah, they play to the limits, don't they? They do. They do indeed, and that's what makes them great. I think, you know, Ireland were unlucky a couple of years ago not to not to get that monkey off their back. They've never beaten them, neither of Scotland. Uh, so, 
uh, hopefully if Ireland do come across uh, the, the the all black machine uh, you know hopefully they have the performance of their lives in them to to uh, to turn them over finally I hate Temp and Fate we were doing an event recently at Kayak Fergus where we club Brano Driscoll was a guest of honour oh, yeah. did a Q&A with him and he uh, he tipped Ireland to make the final and lose to New Zealand Right. Would you have that optimism or confidence, or does that come from a player who it's easy for him? Yeah. And he was in the squad; he wouldn't have said that. He said, "Oh, we're going to be struggling against Canada and Romania," but now suddenly we're in the we're in the World Cup final. Uh huh. Well, uh, Brian's worked for years with Joe. He's uh, he's been around the squad uh, for so long that you know there's no better man to predict. But yeah, I mean, if if the stars align and things go to plan, we beat France and we get the quarter final. Hopefully, we, on our day, we'll beat Argentina. Uh, you know, we're very capable. Be, and and England, I and just, uh, you just know, making you very uncomfortable. I know. You know what? Why not? Why not? We can dare to believe, can't we? Yeah, we we'll beat New Zealand as well yeah. too. But uh, Alan Quinlan, listen to him. He was on RTE there last week, and his tip for the World Cup. Uh, now everybody, you know, inevitably went for New Zealand. New Zealand, you know, the two, the other two mm -hmm. pundits. He went for South Africa. Right. Well. Being a big forward like Alan from Munster, yeah. yeah, I'm not surprised. You're you're coming into late October, come the knockout stages as well. So weather wise, they have a big, strong, uh, experienced pack up front, and the conditions may suit South Africa maybe a wee bit more to mm -hmm. their style of play than maybe in New Zealand who like to play a bit free flowing rugby. So from that point of view, uh, South Africa wouldn't be a bad tip either. Interesting, they've almost been dismissed. They're 9-1, to the same as Ireland, Australia. Mm -hmm. There's not much talk about them coming into the tournament. No, I think they've just come off winning the, the championship down south uh, in the Southern Hemisphere. So I think Michael Cech has turned that the culture of that squad around. Uh, they're lost steel up front now. Uh, and uh, they've just recently beaten the All Blacks. So they're, they're bringing in a few uh, faces and experience from Matt Giddo and uh, the like. So they'll they'll... I'd say be, be confident, get out of their group handily, and uh, you know when they get to the knockout stages, you know it's uh, it's anybody's ball game. Apart from what you know, there's the big hitters we've hit, and we've, we've talked about the, the the home nations, I suppose. Is there one nation that the, the punter who doesn't know what they're really talking about and mm -hmm. likes to watch the game? Is there one nation that maybe could maybe make a bit of an impression that are making great progress uh, behind the scenes? Sounds, you know, yeah, at, at a lower I like level? the look of Samoa. I mean, uh, an old. Ulster teammate of, of mine, uh, uh, Big Fizz, uh, Paolo, is, is playing down there in the second row and uh, they play a nice style of rugby uh, If from a neutral spectator's point of view. If you want to see big hits and fast play, uh, go watch some more Fiji play. Just the way they play rugby is uh, is easy on the eye. Uh, so f uh, I'd, I'd like to see some of those Pacific Nations guys making the quarterfinals again this year. They've come very close to to making a real impression in the in the tournament. I don't know how deep they'll go in the tournament, but uh, they're certainly very entertaining. Good value for money. Well, you talk about good value for money. Can I move you on now? Uh, I want to talk about Ulster just to see where we are. Uh, people talk about this Ulster team knocking on the door and being there thereabouts. I, I suppose now the Ulster fans, the loyal, <coughs> the extremely loyal Ulster fan, they really want a bit of silverware now, don't they, Paddy? Oh, they do, and you know been knocking on the door for years now yeah since Brian McLaughlin came in turned steadied the ship we, we made finals and made semi-finals of leagues and Heineken Cups and getting out of our group and there's a consistency of of uh, of good results but we just don't seem to be able to get across that line and, and take back some silverware so yeah the, the fans have been starved and rightfully so they're they're they want uh, something to show for it and uh, I think this period is always important whenever the internationals are away that the depth of the squad uh, shines through and Ulster will have let themselves down over in Clenethley on the weekend. Uh, they were well organised, they were uh, looked like they had been given a good game plan but I just think the players execution of that let them down whenever they got into good, good positions to, to come away with points, their composure. Uh, let them let them down. So they've got a break now for a few weeks until they get back to to rugby. I think against Treviso. So uh, they've just got to you know refocus and 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 make sure they get maximum points whenever the World Cup's on. 
Uh, I'm going to talk about Ulster's chances uh, uh, in a few moments, but just you mentioned Brian McLaughlin, and I was at Armagh on Gannon at the weekend, and Brian McLaughlin has taken over in Armagh. He's a real, real rugby fella, and even there, sitting when there's no big crowd, there's only a small enough crowd, you know, two local rivals, in behind the post, shouting the instructions all the time to the players, totally committed. Uh-huh. Boy, he loves his rugby. Oh, he hasn't changed then, has he? No. <laughs> no. Uh, whatever the level, he is passionate about his rugby, and... Uh, you know, he was great for, for Ulster whenever whenever he was in charge. Uh, I had a great relationship with him uh, and it's uh, it's nice to see him so involved. I know he's helping out with BRA this year as well and he's and he's uh, obviously doing good things with RMA so I wish him the best of luck. Now, Ulster, you talk about how the fans and everybody, you know, we've got a great stadium, great PR, you know what I mean? Everybody's doing well, everybody uh-huh. buys into Team Ulster as I would call it. Is this team capable of getting silverware? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, if, as long as the players that are away with with the World Cup, be it the Irish players or Ruan, uh, come back and are fit, also have a great squad, a lot of depth, and are capable of uh, of of winning silver. There's no doubt about that. They have experience now. They've been so close uh, that must spur them on. They want to get across the line. I think they've got the right coaching uh, set up in the background as well yeah. and uh, there's no reason as you say why why we can't I think uh, it's very hard you know I've been there I've come close a few times it's very hard to to close out a season and, and win those last few knockout games it's it's very difficult you know uh, the best four sides are, are always there and uh, also had a great chance last year and uh, they just let us slip through so hopefully that'll be a motivating factor to get them back there and give them another chance we certainly hope so, Paddy, and thanks for joining us today. And I suppose the message is for anybody watching this here, don't ring when Ireland are playing, but that'll be right, Paddy, and I'll be <laughs> answering right. your phone. No, exactly. That's all right. Thanks, Dougie.